So in the previous video, I accidentally had an extra problem in there and I skipped problems four and eight. Sorry about that. So I thought I would go ahead and just go over this question with you. So um, go ahead and take a look at number four in your book and let's go ahead and do this one. So this problem right here, I just want to point out that it is a quadratic equation. You haven't probably learned that word yet, but it's a quadratic equation because you have a squared variable, which means there are going to be two solutions to the problem. So looking at it, the first thing I'm going to do is simplify, right? So remember, simplify means distribute and combine like terms. Well, there's no parentheses, no distributing. So what I do is I just combine my like terms. I have an x squared, which counts as 1x squared, plus 2x squared, which is going to give me 3x squared plus 2 over 5 equals 10. Now, if you look, I've crossed off collect. I crossed off collect because you don't have any variables to collect because there are no variables on both sides of the equal sign. So now I'm going to just start my isolating step. And so I'm going to isolate. In this case, when you have a division bar, you have to cancel out the division bar first. You don't move anything on top of the division bar. You have to multiply both sides by 5 to start. And so that's going to give you 3x squared plus 2 equals 50. Now I can start to isolate the variable. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, giving me 3x squared equals 648. My bad. Then to get the x squared alone, because you're multiplying by 3, you're going to divide by 3, giving me x squared equals 48 divided by 3 is 16, right? Now, the opposite of squaring something, remember, is to find the square root. Now, when I find the square root of both sides, there are two numbers I can put in for x to get 16. Remember, x equals 4 and negative 4. So the answer to this one is x equals plus or minus 4. Because if you think about it, if I put 4 in for x, I'll get 16. If I put negative 4 in for x, I'll get 16 as well, because negative 4 times negative 4 is also 16. When I go to check it, remember, when you're checking a negative, you have to remember parentheses around it. So let's just check the positive to start, right? I'm going to start by plugging 4 in for x. So I'm going over to the original problem, and I'm doing 4 squared plus 2 plus 2 times 4 squared over 5 equals 10, right? So then I square. 4 squared is 16, and I have plus 2 plus 4 squared is 16, so 2 times 16 over 5 equals 10. Following the order of operations, I want to multiply 2 times 16 first, which is 32. So I get 16 plus 2 plus 32 over 5 equals 10. And then I go ahead and add 16 plus 2 is 18, and 18 plus 32 is 50. So I get 50 over 5 is equal to 10. 50 divided by 5 is 10, so you get 10 is equal to 10. Okay, so it ch checks out. Now, technically we have two solutions, so technically we should be doing two checks, but I just want to show you something. If I go in now and put negative 4, wherever I see the 4, if I put negative 4, I just want you to think through this. Is negative 4, square, 4 squared 16? It is, right? It is this negative 4 squared 16? It is. So is anything going to change from my first step to the second step? In this case, no. So what I can do is I can just say, well, the plus or minus will work. So I can go ahead and just put plus or minus in here because positive 4 squared is 16, so is negative 4 squared. So that's how you can kind of get out of doing two checks on this one. So the next problem I skipped was this question number 8. Same type of problem, right? In this case, again, there's no simplifying that needs to be done so because there's no parentheses and there are no like terms. Now, you might be looking at that 2x squared and that 3x squared. Keep in mind they're on opposite sides of the equal sign. So we have to think about that. Whenever you have a fraction bar, you have to get rid of that fraction bar before you do anything else, right? So 3x squared plus 11 over 7, that whole thing is being divided by 7. Let's get rid of that. So let's multiply both sides by 7 first. 
Now these sevens will cancel out because remember, this is like seven over one. So those sevens will cancel out. You'll be left with what's on top. Three X squared plus 11 equals two X squared times seven is 14 X squared, okay? Now, this step, once you've gotten rid of that fraction bar, now you can collect your variables from one side to the other. My advice, subtract 3x squared from both sides first, because if you subtract the 14x squared, you'll have zero on this side. So it's good to keep something on one side of your equal sign. So canceling that out, you get 11 equals 14x squared minus 3x squared gives me 11x squared. Then Get that x squared alone, so you're going to divide both sides by 11, leaving you with x squared equals 1. Now, we don't want x squared, we want x, so we undo x squared by finding the square root of both sides, and you get plus or minus 1 equals x, because the square root of 1 is 1, and remember, there's two answers, because negative 1 times negative 1 is also 1.